First off, in at number 10, we have the Atlas Moth. Okay, these moths, like, I'm, I'm probably afraid of it, although it's a moth. <laughs> you take any bug and make them big, and I'm afraid of it. You take a chihuahua, and you make it big for me, and I'm afraid of it. You take wind and turn it into a tornado, I'm afraid. <laughs> you guys get the point. Well, these Atlas Moths are literally as big as birds, and are without a doubt the biggest moths to exist. Their wingspans can measure at least a foot in length. Even their caterpillars can be about an inch thick. Their cocoons are a whole other story, though. Like, yes, silk comes from silkworms, but did you guys know that in Taiwan, some people use the cocoons of these atlas moths as purses? Like, purses, that, that's how big these things are. If we're talking about, like, a purse you can put, like, your whole life in, you put your whole life in there and move out, like, tomorrow. <laughs> okay, to be honest, I don't know if they're, like, mini purses, like, you know, the one seen by Lizzo at the 2019 AMAs, or an actual functional-sized purse, but still. The fact that they can be used as purses is, is too big for me. Coming in at number nine is the Tarantula. Tarantula hawk wasp. Can you just can you just take in the name for a second? This bug is out here taking out tarantulas as its day job. Measuring at a whopping five centimeters, it's one of the biggest wasps on the planet and is usually blue, black in color, with wings and obviously hooked claws because screw us, right? Its stinger is nearly a full centimeter long and it's basically just a flying injection, you guys. Even a baby tarantula hawk wasp has a super demanding diet. They need spider meat, and so their mums try and go for the thickest spiders out there, and I'm talking thick with two C's, you guys. It's serious. They stroke their webs, making them think they've caught something, then they'll come out, get stung, get dragged back to the wasp's nest, and then the wasp will then inject her baby into its body, and the baby will eat it from the inside out. Thankfully, the adults only feed on nectar and berry juice and fruit, and only the females can sting. Apparently, as long as you don't provoke them and leave them alone, they won't sting you. Someone actually volunteered to be stung by one just to see how bad it was, and he scored it a 4 out of 4, saying it was traumatically painful, like a running hairdryer was dropped into his bubble bath. Honestly, say no more, say no more. I'm not trying to interact with any flying injection bug that uses tarantulas as baby nurseries. That's a hard, hard no from me. No. No, 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 no. That was me karate chopping all the tarantula hawk wasps away, just in case you didn't know what that was. At number eight, we have the assassin bug or the kissing bug, and kiss, it definitely does not, unless you're talking about the kiss of death. Now, oh my god, just looks wise, this insect is ugly. I'm sorry, but it is. It has six legs, it's got a round backside and two antennas, and is covered in just hairy fuzz. Not as much as a tarantula, but kind of the same vibe, and it also has this like snout sort of thing on its face, like a mosquito. Mosquito, you know, like a sucker of some kind. The assassin bug uses its straw like mouth to inject its prey with a toxin that literally liquefies their insides. And then it sucks up all those liquefied organs and just enjoys it shamelessly. They're mostly found in the south of the US and they definitely bite. They linger near their prey, mostly mammals, and yes, that unfortunately includes us as well. They like to bite us near our mouth and eyes, and that can cause us to have a lot of redness and swelling. And its feces can also spread a parasite that causes Chagas disease, which damages your major organs and could kill you. <laughs> no. They hide between mattresses, so just stay away from there, and they're attracted to bright lights. So I've, I've warned you guys, I've given you the info you need, be smart, stay away from them. How many times will I cry in this video? Let me know. <laughs> Filling our number seven slot is the Puss Caterpillar, also known as a southern flannel moth. And if you just saw this out, you just think someone left their blonde toupee on the ground. It's just a hairy little thing which may look harmless, but it's actually one of the most venomous caterpillars out there. They're about an inch long and are covered in this fur fuzz that according to Wikipedia, makes them look like a Persian cat. They do not look like Persian cats from any angle. They come in multiple colors and are mostly found in the eastern states of the US, and when they're young, their fur is a bit more curly, so I guess they're cuter, and when they get older, their black furry feet come out, and they kind of look like bumblebee knockoffs. Now, their class is so dangerous because this fur is actually made up of venomous spines that if touched, leads to immediate skin irritation, bumps, swelling. People that have touched them have described the pain as similar to blunt force trauma or a broken bone. Now, if the reaction is severe, it could lead to nausea, chest pain, difficulty breathing, like it gets 
gets bad. Oh my god, there's a bug. But the treatment is actually pretty funny. Within an hour of touching a puss caterpillar, if you have any of its spines on you, you can remove them by using scotch tape and putting on your arm and just ripping it off. DIY remedies. Now at number six is the tetsu fly, also known as tick tick flies. These flies bite like a mofo and are mostly found in Africa. Looks wise, they're usually brown or yellow, they have fat bellies, and they sort of look like shorter, stubbier mosquitoes. And like mosquitoes, they suck out your blood, but in a much more brutal way than a mosquito. Their mouths have tiny serrations all over it that they use to saw into your skin. But it's not just the sucking blood part that sucks about them, pun intended, didn't even realize. They're pesky creatures because they transmit diseases really easily, and the most common one being the sleeping sickness. It starts off with a bit of a headache, then a fever, your muscles start to ache, but as it gets worse, you'll start getting more tired. You'll experience a sudden personality change, your coordination will become poor and you'll just be severely confused. And if you leave it untreated, it's fatal. In terms of prey, they usually target mammals found in the woodlands. The females stick to animals, but it's actually the males that usually attack humans. And sadly, despite being flies, they're not as easy to kill as house flies are. Like why? Why is it so hard? They're physically tough and it takes more than a fly swatter to end those hoes. We're gonna need an army guys, we're gonna need an army. Coming in at number 5 is the Amazonian giant centipede. Commonly considered the world's largest species of centipede, they can grow up to 35 centimeters long. And if I saw this crawling on the ground, I wouldn't even try to kill it, I would just vomit or cry or both. It's mostly found in South America and the Caribbean and generally in most tropical rainforest kind of areas or dry forest areas. As carnivores, they feed on any animal they can kill, so it usually eats other smaller insects, you know, spiders, small reptiles like frogs or lizards, and at best, snakes and bats. Now these centipedes sort of have conflicting personality traits. On the one hand, they're aggressive and on the other hand, they're nervous. So what that translates to is the centipede latching onto its predator's legs and biting it and hoping its venom will subdue or kill it. Now it's fatal to most small animals and thankfully non-lethal to humans. A win for us, you guys. Only one person has ever died from an Amazonian giant centipede bite and they were four years old, so I feel like the fact they were small had a part to play in it. And although it may not kill you, it still causes severe pain and swelling, fever, and just all around weakness. Weakness. And of course, if you're allergic to its toxins, then yeah, you're a goner for sure. Sorry about that. Allergies are a bummer. At number four is the bullet ant. Now, if you were to guess which insect has the most painful sting in the world and you guessed the bullet ant, well, you'd be right. These ants are mostly found in rainforests in Nicaragua, the east of Honduras, and the south of Paraguay. They honestly look like regular ants. I couldn't really tell the difference at all except they're hairier. Now, they're not aggressive ants per se, but they get super vicious when they're defending their nest. Like, they actually make a sound and then start stinging you. Now, people have compared the pain of a sting to being shot. They said it feels like waves of burning, throbbing pain that doesn't let up for 24 hours. If you get stung, it's likely you'll start finding blood in your poop. And the sting has a paralyzing toxin in it as well, so really there's just nothing good going on here. There's apparently even a tribe in Brazil that uses them in their initiation rites to become warriors. They sedate 80 of them, then weave them into gloves made from leaves with the stingers facing inwards, obviously, and then the person has to wear them for five full minutes. To fully complete the initiation, they have to do this 20 times over the course of months or years. Can you imagine? I would actually die. I would die. I would straight up die. Filling our number three slot is the giant silkworm caterpillar, also known as the killer caterpillar. And I'm really worried that there are so many caterpillar centipede like insects on this list because I thought most of them were harmless. Turns out they're most definitely not. Now, this insect looks messed up and creepy, I'm not gonna lie. It's just ugly, I'm sorry. Looks wise, they're around four to five centimeters long, and the actual bodies are green or brown, but what makes them creepy are all these tubercles they have coming out out of them. They look like little leaves coming out of them and they are detachable. In essence, the caterpillar is really just the larva of a giant silkworm moth and it's their detachable hairs that make them super venomous. If you touch one or pick one up, the spine punches your skin really easily and releases its toxins into you. From there, it can cause blood leakage into the brain and it won't even clot because the toxins have strong anti-clotting agents in them, which is just great because 
crate. It also causes gangrene, hematoma, and before long, the internal bleeding spreads throughout your whole body, which leads to brain death and compression. A total of 500 people have died from touching them, and honestly, you need about 20 to 100 of these spines injecting venom into you for you to actually die. So I guess the numbers are a bit on our side. And if you don't live in the area they're found in, then you're good. Like if you're all the way in like Australia, you're all good. But they have spiders. Now, at number two is the Asian giant hornet. And if you've watched my wasp nests that need to be destroyed series, then you've heard about these a million times. But oh my god, these little monsters are just lethal. Now they're the largest species of hornet in the world, and although they're found throughout Asia, they're mostly located in Japan. And you know how with most animals and bugs, they won't really say anything to you unless you provoke them? Well, that's not the case here. They will literally come for you. They're very aggressive, they're scared of literally nothing. They feed honeybees to their young, which means destroying whole hives in the process, which they're just fine with. If we do the numbers, one Asian giant hornet can tear 40 honeybees in half in less than a minute. Less than a minute, you guys. That is, I'm getting anxiety. There was a case where a swarm of the hornets attacked this 87 year old Japanese grandma in a wheelchair, stung her more than 150 times in an hour, and then she died. Like the Japanese death toll from these hornets are 40 people a year, and back in 2013, they injured 1,600 people in China. The stings usually result in cardiac arrest, but if they sting you enough times, your organs just start failing, and it's, it's, it's not a good time, I'd imagine. And finally, at number one is the Maricopa harvester ant. I know you're probably like, why the hell is an ant at number one? Well, I mean, fair, but also it's the most venomous insect in the world. It's mostly found in Arizona, so sucks to suck Arizona residents. I'm glad I'm not one of them. <laughs> its venom and sting is more than 20 times stronger than a honeybee's, and the intense pain after can last longer than four to eight hours. The one interesting thing about their venom is that it contains this alkaloid poison that chemically alarms just all the other ants around in the vicinity to come attack. It takes about 12 stings to kill a rat and it'd take about 350 to kill a human, which sounds like a lot, but if they're all coming at you like an army, they can get to that number pretty damn quickly. And it's not even that 350 ants have to separately sting you, an ant will attach itself to you, then turn around so it can just repeatedly sting the shit out of you. So really, the possibility of like a mere 35 ants stinging you 10 times each looks very viable. They're usually a brownish color and are covered in tiny little hair like follicles and those pincer mouths they have. Run for your life, people. Run for your lives. Coming in at number 10, we're going to cover something that was kind of in our last video. We gave you two different beetles that were on our last list. We have the Titan beetle and the Achaean beetle. So we're going to kick off this list with another giant beetle, Ringo Starr. <laughs> Just kidding. He was a beetle, but the kind that plays classic rock songs. You guys get the joke. But back to insects, the Goliath beetle. Based on weight and bulk, Goliath beetles are a strong contender for the title of Earth's largest insect. Native to Africa, they measure 60 to 110 millimeters for the males and 50 to 80 millimeters for the females. As adults, they can weigh up to 100 grams in the larval stage, although the adults only weigh about half that weight. They typically don't move much in the mornings when it's cool, and they stay in a lethargic state. But once they are warmed up by the sun, they become more active. They fly away when they are frightened. Though they are believed to be primarily vegetarians in the wild, they have shown a voracious appetite for protein in captivity, and captive beetles are often fed dog and cat food. Next up, number nine, we have the Titan beetle, also known as the Titanus giganteus. It's the largest beetle in the Amazon, and when it comes to beetles, isn't there like millions of different beetles? Well, this beetle measures up to just under seven inches long, or about a half a foot. They are known to have a mandible strong enough to snap a pencil in half and to rip a human skin. So maybe don't let your curiosity get the best of you by sticking your finger in front of these bugs' face. You might be leaving with one less digit. Continuing on this list, continuing on this path of the big insects, number eight is probably the biggest insect that ever lived. We're talking about the Prada Donata, which was basically a giant dragonfly. So these things are flying. This insect is a flyer. Actually, that's exactly what it is. While dragonflies 
the day are pretty large and when you compare them to other insects they don't hold a flame to the size of their ancestors well these things used to be nearly 2.5 feet long so we're not talking about inches when you talk about insects it's usually millimeters or centimeters or uh it's usually or maybe in inches but we're never talking in feet well this guy we're talking feet and we're talking two and a half of them and we're talking about from wing tip to wing tip and they have giant mandibles perfect for attacking their prey luckily though they went extinct a long long time ago so we don't actually have to worry about these creatures anymore at least i don't think so number seven are giant stick bugs you know those things that you sometimes find on trees you go pick it up thinking it's a stick and this stick is freaking moving and it scares the hell out of you i usually pick it up and say is this real life right now and and the stick guy's like yeah yeah but like i'm i'm real for sure well these things are like two feet long i don't think you want your dog playing fetch with one of these sticks luckily these things are usually harmless though but they have been known to release a really gross smelling odor as a defense mechanism and attach their own limbs to escape capture so imagine hanging on to like the butt end of the stick thing and it just like delodges its butt and it starts running away <laughs> like it's 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 pretty crazy and it's actually pretty an interesting insect uh one that i don't need to get too close to though number six spot we have well we're talking about the heaviest bug known to researchers and we're talking about the giant weta i just like saying this insect's name giant weta well the name weta comes from the morari word weta punga meaning god of ugly things it's this for life right now who named this that sucks imagine being called the god of ugly things it's not just like just being ugly it has to be like god of ugly things like the best of being ugly well luckily they don't fly imagine seeing these giant wetas in the air yeah no thanks half it through now on this list we have the dreaded tarantula hawk so not just a norma tarantula i would freak out if this crawled on me and uh if i was on one of those like fair factor episodes or on the show and joe rogan's like hey man you you gotta eat this thing yeah i'm i'm losing the money it, it, 10 mil yeah i i still can't i still can't do it well these things are weird and they're they're not like tarantulas or hawks they're huge wasps so whoever's naming these things you have to do a little bit better well they eat tarantulas it almost sounds like okay the tarantula hawk eats tarantulas okay so these things are eating themselves <laughs> well apparently these wasps have hooks on their legs which help them latch onto their prey which they then stick with one of their most painful stingers known to man and tarantulas alike believe it or not though they apparently usually are pretty calm towards humans unless provoked from there number four we have the giant water bug these massive bugs can grow to be as long as four inches and as the name suggests well they live in the water so not only bugs are in on land um when you go swimming you think you're safe well i, I mean there could be sharks and fish and then that's pretty terrifying but now there are bugs you have to worry about in the water i mean i remember when i found out that snakes can be in the water and then seeing my first snake in the water just freaked me out is it just me or am i afraid of pretty much everything <laughs> well they also have these massive pincers well you can imagine why they have the nickname toe biters well when they have their prey they inject them with some sort of digestive venom and then they suck out the juices which is just the most disgusting thing to think about i wonder what that means for the toes of innocent swimmers but they're still sometimes served as a bit of a delicacy in thailand so people are going into the water and capturing these things and then they're sucking their juices out so if you're ever in the mood to give those toe biters a taste of their own medicine uh thailand is the place to go for you we have action beetle these buggers can be five inches long and over one and a half inches thick they even have those weird horns on their face that make them honestly look like a bit of a rhino which makes sense though because they're nicknamed the rhinoceros beetle because of their impressive armor the adult action beetles have actually no natural predators because of this and they are actually often kept as pets by people who live near the rainforest number two is the queen alexander's bird wing similar to the atlas moth this butterfly has a wingspan of about a foot long which makes it the biggest butterfly in the world i think butterflies are just amazing there are so many different types of butterflies 
these beautiful giants are entirely gentle. And one bug that I am not afraid of if it lands on me. Well, okay, I've had a butterfly startle me, but yeah, let's, let's just move on. They don't seem to pose a risk to humans. I mean, it's just a butterfly, right? Unfortunately though, they are on the endangered species list. And thinking about it now, I don't see butterflies as often as like I used to. It's largely due to palm oil plantations taking over their natural habitats. So yeah, it's people that are destroying these butterflies and it's pretty sad. In our final spot, we have the Arthropolera or the prehistoric giant centipede. Honestly, all you need to know about these things is that they grew way too big, like way bigger than they need to be. They're, okay, get this. They're a half a meter long. So we're not even talking about, you know, the millimeters, the centimeters, the inches or feet. Yeah, we're, we've gone beyond that. Uh, we're talking meters. Despite their size, these centipedes were not predatory and lived entirely on plant life. So that's one good thing. You know, they're not eating humans. They also have no natural predators because of how massive they were. Oh yeah, and some good news, they went extinct. So it's kind of good that they went extinct because they seem pretty terrifying, but it's also sad that animals, like their whole population, the whole existence of them just disappear. Like how amazing would that be to bring back a saber-toothed tiger? Starting off at number 10 is the screw fly or its scientific name, Hominivorax, which happily translates to man-eater. And they are. <laughs> Found mostly in the Western Hemisphere, there are actually two types of this bug, the Old World version and the New World version, and clearly this is the new one for anyone that was confused. Now an adult screw fly will literally lay a hundred eggs on some warm blooded animal with a wound. And unlike the Old World version, the New World ones lay six to eight batches of eggs into one wound. Usually the adult screw fly enter baby animals through their belly buttons, but only if they're newborn, they're just savage, no one, no one is safe. The eggs hatch and then go for the wound and use their fangs to cut through the skin and they'll keep going until they hit bone. They'll bite through your nerves, they'll enter the bloodstream, they don't give a flying <laughs> The more you try to get rid of it, the deeper it'll burrow into you, which is just Magnificent. I just love it. It gets just get better and better. Unless you get it treated, they will literally keep feeding on you until you die. Thankfully, we aren't their first choice of meal, but an open wound is an open wound. Their jaws can easily cut through our skin and tissue as well, and there's no medication available for it other than maybe surgically removing the infestation or just dying, really. Coming in at number nine, the giant burrowing cockroach, also called the rhinoceros cockroach and the little bug. This insect is the heaviest cockroach in the world, and sorry, any bug that is named after an extremely large animal is enough to make me cringe. But people say, oddly enough, this is one roach you may want to keep around. I don't know who on earth would want an XXL cockroach around, but supposedly, unlike other cockroaches, the rhinoceros cockroach doesn't have wings, isn't considered a pest, and plays an important role in the ecosystem by breaking down dead leaves. Some people have found that they make good pets. That is a hard no for me. A pet? You can't tell me that this creature snuggles or likes being pet. Anyways, they're found in Australia and these bugs can live for as long as 10 years and they can grow up to be three inches long. Luckily, I'm in Canada and not in Australia. Australia sounds like a different world with all the creatures they've got running around. Coming in number eight, Macrodonita cerviconus. Talk about a tongue twister. Let me break it down for you. Macrodonita means long tooth. Cerviconus means deer antler. It is also known as the saber-toothed longhorn beetle and is one of the largest beetles known with specimens exceeding 17 centimeters in length. Part of this length is due to the enormous mandibles from which it derives both of the names in its biomen. Most of this species life is spent in a larval stage which can last up to 10 years and the larva of the saber-tooth longhorn is extremely large reaching up to 21 centimeters in length. Macrodonita cerviconis is from the rainforests of Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, and Brazil. Additional described species of the genus extend over all range of the genus from Guatemala to Argentina. I'm gonna go ahead and mark those as no-go spots for my next holiday. Coming in hot at number seven on this list we have the white witch moth. I don't know who named it the White Witch Moth, but it's a lot cooler and creepier than its scientific name, so we will be calling it the White Witch Moth for the purpose of this video. It is much a competitor for the title of largest insect. This may be true by the measure of its wingspan. A Brazilian specimen with a wingspan of almost 30 centimeters appears to hold the record. Their coloration is beautiful, but also perfectly adapted to blend in with their favorite tree. 
trees. But tree bark isn't the only thing these giant bugs are mistaken for. When flying, it's actually so big that it often gets mistaken for other flying creatures, such as bats. The white witch occurs from Uruguay to Mexico and appears to stray as far north as Texas. Tom Turpin, an entomologist from Purdue University, said that the reduced size of insects these days may have to do with high oxygen levels in the prehistoric atmosphere. All that oxygen would have supplied insect bodies well, but when oxygen levels decreased, it's possible that larger insects weren't able to survive. Thank God. For number six, we're bringing you a more common insect that you've all probably heard about but have rarely seen. The world's largest praying mantis on record was about 18 centimeters long in southern China and it was discovered in 1929. According to Wikipedia, they can reach lengths of 20 centimeters. As an apex carnivorous insect, the praying mantis feeds mainly on other insects. It is, however, documented that larger praying mantises are able to consume small reptiles and even small mammals or birds. Not to mention the whole female decapitating its mate thing. The only thing scarier than a large insect is a large psychopathic insect that murders its lovers. We are halfway through this list and for the number 5 spot we have an otherwise common household insect, but in this case it has a giant cousin that you don't want to mess with. Houseflies are gross. Beyond being annoying, they live in poop and spread it all over your food, and when they land on your food they barf digestive fluids onto it. But at least they aren't big. Well, most of them aren't. Some are positively enormous. Garomitis heros is a species of giant flies that belongs to the family of Mitidae. Garomitis heros can reach lengths of 32 to 70 millimeters and has a wingspan of around 10 centimeters. It is the largest fly known to man and has been reported to grow 7 centimeters long. However, when Erica McAllister of the Natural History Museum in London, UK measured her specimens, she found that they were only about 6 centimeters. This may be close to the upper size limit for these flies, at least with Earth's climate and atmosphere makeup the way that it is. According to a 2005 study, ambient temperatures set a limit on the metabolic rate a fly can achieve and thus on how big it can afford to grow. So thankfully it seems that these guys aren't super common anymore. The wing membrane is a whitish brown or orange with a hyaline apex and posterior margin. Adult males are flower visitors while females do not feed at all. Larvae live in the nests of ants feeding on immature insects. Mature larvae dig into the soil of a propation chamber, then the imago emerge. I wonder what kind of fly swatter you would need to kill one of these suckers. I hope I never have to find out. Coming in number four, red driver ants are big. The males are really big, but the queens, they're like scary big, like two inches big, and they have just the kind of attitude you want in a huge ant. They are really aggressive with a bite that burns like lava. You can find them in the lower parts of Africa, roaming around in nomadic colonies, numbering in the thousands. They will march around going wherever food is, which is often where people are. Compost piles are known to be smorgasbords of treats for these red driver ant colonies, where they settle down and devour every last scrap of edible goodness within them. They are rarely disturbed while they feast. After all, are you going to be the one to tell a two inch ant with a sting that won't kill you but make you wish that you are dead that it's not allowed to eat your garbage? All right, we are now on to number three. And for the third spot, we have the St. Helena earwig or the St. Helena giant earwig. This is a extinct species of large earwig endemic to the oceanic island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic Ocean. Growing as large as 84 millimeters long, including its forceps, the St. Helena earwig was the world's largest earwig operative word was thankfully. It was shiny black with reddish legs, short elytria, and no hind wings. The earwig was endemic to St. Helena, being found on the Horse Point Plains, Prosperous Bay Plains, and the eastern arded area of the island. It was known to have lived in the plain areas, gumwood forests, and seabird colonies in rocky places. The earwig inhabited deep burrows, coming out only at night following rains. Dave Clark of the London Zoo said that the females make extremely good mothers. Anyone else a little weirded out? at the thought of a giant disgusting insect being a good mom. Mothers do anything for their young, and I wouldn't want to cross a giant earwig with her babies. The earwig has not been seen alive since 1967, despite searches for it in 1988, 1993, 2003, and 2005. It is possibly extinct due to loss of habitat by the removal of nearly all surface stones for construction, as well as predation by introducing rodents, mantids, and centipedes. Coming in at number 
number two on this list, we've met some big beetles so far, but this is the biggest of them all. We have the Hercules beetle. These bad boys swagger around the jungles of South America, showing off their huge horn-like pincers on the forehead of their impressive seven inch long body. At least the males do, the females don't have this distinctive feature, although the girl bodies do grow a little bit bigger. The horns, which can grow longer than the male Hercules beetle's body, are mainly used to fight other Hercules beetles. Men are the same no matter what genus or species they are. Proportionally speaking, these are the strongest creatures on Earth for their size. They are able to carry 850 times their own body weight. And the moment you've all been waiting for, number one on this list, Meganeurosis. This is an extinct genus of griffin fly known from the early Permian era of North America and represents the biggest known insect of all time. The genus includes two described species, Meganeurosis permiana, described in 1937 from Elmo, Kansas. It was one of the largest known insects that ever lived, with a reconstructed wing length of 330 millimeters and an estimated wingspan of up to 700 10 millimeters and a body length from head to tail of almost 43 centimeters. Meganeurosis americana, discovered in Oklahoma in 1940, is most probably a junior synonym for Meganeurosis permiana. It is represented by a four-wing fragment 28 centimeters long, which is conserved and displayed in the Harvard Museum of Natural History. The complete reconstructed wing had an estimated total length of 30.5 centimeters, making it the largest insect wing ever found. Mm -hmm. 